Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, I have a very special video. I'm making a delicious cranberry apple butter bread from my new book with Rie in my mom's kitchen. I'm on my book tour, and Rie, can you tell us a little bit about yourself in case they don't know how yeah. amazing you are? <laughs> Hi, I'm Rie. I make videos for Tasty and BuzzFeed, and I also have my own YouTube channel. Check her out. She's amazing, and I love her. <laughs> We're making a delicious bread. The first thing we need, of course, is some happy yeast. Yes. So we have three quarters of a cup of warm milk right here. I'm gonna add the yeast in, and I'm gonna get this recipe started, but then Rie's gonna help me out, and yes. I'm gonna put her to work. <laughs> add the yeast in there, along with one teaspoon of sugar. This is so weird to be my mom's kitchen. This is your mom's sugar pot. <laughs> this is so cute. Add that in there. Give it a little stir, and we're gonna set it aside for about five minutes until it's nice and foamy. If your yeast doesn't foam up, you have to start over again because mm -hmm. they are doing all of the work for this delicious bread. Yes. In the bowl of our mixer, we're gonna add two and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour. That's 330 grams. And this must be flour. It is flour <laughs> for sure. Ooh. So my mom said she had cloves, but she has whole cloves. And these are cloves, but because it's like her personal spices, she mm -hmm. adds cardamom to them. Oh, I love cardamom. So this is a special clove and cardamom version of the bread. You can always play with the spices in any recipe. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention on my adding to We're it. so close. Okay. It's 330. That's good, perfect. Right. Okay. okay. Now we're gonna add three tablespoons of sugar. Okay, three tablespoons of sugar. Oh. Do you have any um, story about this bread? I love braided breads, mm. and my mother actually is like the bread queen. She loves bringing breads to family dinners. Aww. And uh, my dad's side of the family was part Greek, so mm -hmm. we had like braided Greek breads too. And in the book, I wanted to have like a celebration of fall. Mm -hmm. So I took apple butter, I took marzipan, and we have a fresh cranberry compote we're gonna make. Oh, nice. And these things are all gonna work with the cloves and the cardamom today. Oh, my and give you like just like a perfect bread to have in the morning with a cup of tea or coffee. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that sounds amazing. And the braiding is really fun too. Okay. <laughs> One teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cloves, clove mixture. All right. Just a little bit goes a long way, and I love cloves. It's mm. very like fall winter to me. Yeah, it's this your favorite spice? Cardamom is actually my favorite spice. Oh. So I was so happy that my mom added cardamom to hers. <laughs> It runs in the family. Yeah. I'm gonna let you do the honors and assemble this all together. So okay. first off, give us a whisk, por favor. All right. Easy peasy. She loves cardamom too. We had a second uh, where we were heating the butter up and she was telling me all about some delicious <laughs> cardamom things. I feel like you're my soulmate. I love cardamom. I think cardamom is one of my favorites. So good. Add it to your spice drawer. Mm -hmm. One egg. This should be room temperature, but if it's cold, it's okay. You could add it to the warm butter and it'll warm everything up. The butter is warm and not hot. Uh, give that a little bit of a mix. Okay. That's nice. How did I do? You did amazing. <laughs> Our yeast are nice and happy, so I know it's safe to add them into my flour mixture. Get in. All of it. I never like to waste any yeast, too, because mm. they have so much work to do. Yes. We'll add the butter and egg in as well. Okay. Ooh, beautiful color. And now here's the deal. Mm -hmm. Whenever I have a dough, even if you read a recipe and it's like, put it in the dough, put it in the mixer, start on low, I always like to mix it by hand first. Oh, that's a good tip. Because especially for enriched doughs where you're adding a lot of butter and mm -hmm. eggs and things like that, just make it into a paste to get started. And that way your mixer is doing a lot of work efficiently. Yeah, so and this, your flour doesn't fly away. Exactly. Nobody likes the flour or sugar explosion. Mm -hmm. This looks great. I'm gonna pop this onto my mom's mixer from the 1980s. <laughs> Vintage. Vintage, and it works beautifully. She wants a new one, and I'm like, no. You can never, I'm gonna make it works. her. It works. I'm gonna make her mail it to me if she does get a new one. Okay, we're gonna mix this on medium low for about four minutes until it's tacky, but not sticky. Tacky, not sticky. So, tacky does mean sticky, but it's gonna be tacky and a little bit sticky, but it won't stick to your fingers. If it's sticking to your fingers, add about a tablespoon of flour in while it's mixing until it doesn't stick to your fingers. 
Why it's another baking tool people should buy? Beside a scale? Yeah. Or a silpat? These are oh, great. Yeah. Do you use these? I don't, but don't? maybe I should buy if you I think recommend. I highly recommend you use one of these. They are they give you cookies that I feel are a little bit less burnt on the bottom. Mm. It's almost like an insulator. Oh. So I just that's my thought. Yeah, maybe like I should buy this. Like whenever I bake macaron, I feel like it, the bottom is too crispy. Mm. So maybe I should use. But for macaron, oh. paper is actually better. Really? Yes. Okay. Well, why? Because the um, it's too slippery oh. and they spread too much. Good tip. Okay. <laughs> I messed up so many macarons. I have a lot of tips for you. Macaron is so difficult to make. There's, it's sticking to my finger a little bit. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of flour in just while it mixes. There you go. <gasps> Thank you. I'm your sous chef. Oh, so we have a swap out for the dough because I don't want to keep Riachia's <laughs> a two and a half year old at home, but my mom helped me make the swap out. And it was so fun making something with my mom. Yeah. It's always fun to have someone in the kitchen with you. You should bring her. You should make a video with her. Are you already planning one? I would love that. Yeah. Mom. <laughs> she's busy with them. She's busy with the grandkids right now. Mm. This is almost there. So let's we'll mix for a minute. Haki not stick. Okay, doke. So I have a little drop of oil in this bowl and I will spread it out. Mm. Our dough needs to rise. For how long? I forgot. <laughs> Isn't it so good to have your book? It is. Oh my gosh. I, I've been referring back to my book. It's lovely. I highly recommend everyone get a copy if you yeah. haven't already. And I have to tell you, it's been one of like the nicest things in my entire life, mm. uh, meeting people in person. So, so many lovely people have come out to say hello and it's been nothing but like beautiful stories and a wonderful time. Oh yeah. This dough is in a rise for an hour. That's what I checked my book and it said. All right. Do you want me to hold it? Oh, thank you. It's very, very rich. So it's like a nice, soft, nice. luscious dough. We've got this. You can give it a turn or two and just let it get nice and coated with the oil so it doesn't dry out. This will double in size. It could be an hour on the countertop or it could be a day in the fridge. So mm -hmm. a lot of times like we're busy at home. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to do a recipe all the way through, right. but I still want to make something delicious. So for breads, you can leave them in the fridge for a day even two days sometimes. Oh. Two days is running a risk, but I've ran the risk and it worked. <laughs> so I'm only advising one day. Cover this up, a nice warm, cozy place, but my mom and I made this dough last night, so I have a swap out. Yay, shout out mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's a lifesaver. Yeah. So I asked my mom if we have a pastry mat at home. This is actually for us to bake on. And she said, yes, we Ooh. have my grandmother's pastry mat. Oh, yes. So this is actually a little bit older than I am and I think it still works just fine. So I love that. I mean, it's my, I love yeah. it being in this kitchen, even though it's not. Look, it has a, how do you call this? Little suction cups. Yeah. Because yeah, it was like before um, the silicone mats were popular. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. I know. And you can wash it. You can wash it and you just add a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick. Mm. Ah, so Smart. nice. Watch it. Everything stick horribly to this. <laughs> One thing that's nice about using the fridge for your dough is it's a little bit firmer. So it still rows up, but it's so much nicer to roll it out. <gasps> Do you think my mom knows where her rolling pin is? I forgot to ask for one. Mom! <laughs> mom, can I have a rolling pin, please? <gasps> Thanks, mom. I, so I would have taken a wine glass if you didn't have one. <laughs> a wine bottle. <laughs> no, I have more, but I want to exhibit my rolling pins one day. Oh, oh. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> this, actually we're jumping the gun a little bit because I should make the fillings. <laughs> At home, you're not gonna have a swap out. So we're not gonna roll this up just yet. I'm gonna fold it and yeah. set this aside. While your dough rises, we're gonna make two fillings for it. Yes. Technically it's three, but I'm assuming most people are just gonna buy apple butter. Mm. There is a recipe for it in the book if you want. Page. So, I don't remember. <laughs> We have the apple butter. We have a marzipan or frangipan style filling, which is really easy. We're just gonna stir it together. Mm -hmm. And we have a cranberry compote. So for the cranberry compote, okay. in a small saucepan, half a cup of cranberries. These were frozen, but they're thawed now. All right. So I have some delicious cranberry juice in there too. Mm -hmm. I want 
a quarter cup or four tablespoons of granulated sugar. Yeah, it's a good thing to remember. Quarter cup is four tablespoons. One teaspoon of ginger. And we're gonna pop this over medium heat along with a tablespoon of water. And you basically want this to have two things happening. The cranberries are gonna burst and you can use a spoon to mash them a bit but it's also gonna congeal into like a beautiful jam. Mm. And if you don't wanna do this, but you still wanna make this bread, you could use a cranberry sauce instead. Do you still wanna add a spice? Yes. Okay. And you could add other spices too if you wanted to. Cardamom? Yes, I was gonna suggest <laughs> any spice you might like. Cardamom, for Cardamom. example. Okay, onto medium heat, come on over. You can have the honors of stirring. Thank you. So we're just I gonna always wanted to do oh this. My, <laughs> you're like, my dreams have come true. And I'm gonna add the tablespoon of water that I totally forgot about. <laughs> Good thing you have your book handy. These cranberries are going to burst and then we can set everything aside and make our easy frangipan. Do you have a favorite recipe to make for fall? I like making apple pies. You know, like in LA, it doesn't get too, I know. too cool too soon. So like I'm waiting, when can I start making pie? Cause you cannot make pies in a hot kitchen cause butter melts and like you don't want to turn on the oven. I know, it's yeah. a whole vibe, but I totally get it. It's yeah. like, you don't feel like doing it until the weather's calmed down and then you can have everything bubbling away in the stove yeah. and have those cozy moments. Yeah, I have a question for yes. you. Uh -oh. <laughs> How many plaid shirts do you have? Well, on this trip, I brought six. <laughs> but in my closet, I don't know. I think I have like this many if you like put them close on hangers. Uh -huh. I haven't counted. It's a lot. You should, you should do the tour. Like a on closet, closet tour, yes. <laughs> it would be a very repetitive video. <laughs> it would be like the same thing over and over again. It's like, oh, I'm wearing a cranberry gingham shirt today. Because like I was watching your video and went to your, you know, front page, uh -huh. and you are wearing similar plaid shirt, yes, but it's slightly true. different. They're slightly different. So sometimes I'm like, this is a brand. Like I was like wearing a brand new shirt I got for my birthday, uh -huh. and I was like, can you tell? <laughs> this is getting really nice and bubbly. Now I think you can give it a little bit of a pressure, okay. just to smash them down. Smash them. That'll get all those juices out, some oh, of the yeah. pectin, and it'll help thicken things up. It's very soft now. This looks great. I'm gonna take it off heat. All right. And the pan has a little bit of residual heat. It'll keep evaporating some of the water. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna be really nice. It can cool. In the meantime, we're gonna make our easy frangipan. Yes. Yes. I love almonds, too. Oh, yeah. I have two tablespoons of softened butter. I was like softening it with my hands, but if you use European style butter, because it's all butter fat mm -hmm. and there's no water, it's actually not as hard. Mm. Another nice thing. And hands are best tools. Yes. <laughs> One egg. Okay. This should be room temperature, but if it's not, it's okay. I want a tablespoon, oh, okay. sugar. Mm -hmm. Friend told me that there are four tablespoons of sugar in a quarter cup. Yes. We have just enough wow. of this dainty little sugar thing, I think. That's exactly four tablespoons. Perfect. Yay. And also one quarter of a teaspoon of almond extract. You can eyeball it. Okay. I'm using my mom's mixer. <laughs> Just very powerful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so you're going to mix this up until it's nice and smooth. I don't want to see any lumps of butter in here. But honestly, you can have a couple lumps. Mix this up for one minute or until it is nice and fluffy. Does that look fluffy? I think we need a little more. Okay. Oh, this one's not the highest speed. Oh, that was low. <laughs> what brand is this? Okay, that's good because I feel like it's about to take off into outer space. Yes. <laughs> one cup of almond flour. Okay. And then to help firm things up a little bit too, one tablespoon of flour. We're going to mix this on low until just oh. combined. <laughs> Okay, it'll be nice and thick and form a paste. Perfect. Now, mm -hmm. for the first time, we can roll our dough out. Yay! Rie. Yes? Do you think you could roll this out into a 16 by 11 inch rectangle? Yes. Because we have measurement here. Thank 16. you, Grandma. <laughs> what did you say, 16 by? 16 by 11. 11, okay. I love seeing all the little bits of clove yeah, in the dough. Yeah, and it's gonna be a very nice, almost subtle flavor, even though clove is so strong. Mm -hmm. The chai babka in the book 
also from the fall chapter, has um, a lot of black tea leaves Ooh. that are infused into the milk. It has speckles of black all throughout, and I love the way it looks when it's rolling, getting rolled out. Which one was the most difficult recipe, like to test? To test? The chocolate carrot cake took so long because I had a dream mm -hmm. of a, like, you know, you, you have a recipe in your mind. Yeah. And you're like, in my mind, it's gonna be like this. And yes. it, you're like trying and trying and trying to get it to be like that. So yeah. I wanted the cake to be as chocolatey and I, I wanted like chocolate in my mouth mm -hmm. and a lot of spices too. Yeah. So it just took a long time to get, I had to keep adding more chocolate in mm -hmm. different kinds. And then um, the nicest part of that though was the, um, the frosting is a cream cheese frosting with orange. Mm. And orange and cream cheese go to well, go so well together. How do they look? 16 by 11? Well, let's see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give it a little bit of, I think this is like 11 inches right okay, now. But, like, but I think we need a bit more. Longer. A bit more length. Also this marble rolling thing, it's so nice. It's, it's doing heavy. a lot of work, yeah. yeah. So it's easier to roll everything. thing. It's time to spread. Okay. The frangipan or the almond paste is gonna go right down the middle. Okay. So like a strip of three inches, but leave an inch on either side. I love like this mark on this. Got it. An inch on either side, plain. All right. So we gonna do, we gonna use all? All of it. Okay. Thank you so much for coming out, by the way. Of course, anytime, it's fun. Rie and I got to do something like a year ago, yes. I think. I made I made something fancy for her. Yes. One of her, like, <laughs> popular, she has many popular things, but one of her popular video series is called Make It Fancy, where mm -hmm. she takes something and she like does some magic on it. So I took a store-bought cake and I made it fancy. Yes, it was so fancy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and, and this is our first time meeting yes, in person. Yes, but I feel like we we're friends already. Yes, I feel like I know you forever. I want three tablespoons of apple butter and you could totally buy this or you can make it on your own. It's fun to make apple butter mm. because it smells so, so good. good. It like makes your whole kitchen smell like an apple pie for hours. Yeah. And it's kind of fun to see old apples disappear. Yeah, and change color too, <laughs> yeah. because it like really gets caramelized down. You can spread that out too. Oh, smells good. I hope someone invent a technology that you can smell through the screen. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> right, isn't it? It would also be very truth telling, like if something isn't delicious yes. and someone's claiming it. <laughs> the viewers would know for sure. Yes. Here we have our cranberries and look how, oh, nice. see how firm it's set up? Wow, it's like a quick jam. It really is a quick jam. The cranberries did their business mm. and I'm gonna spread this out a little bit and you can spread it more. And it does not have to be perfectly even. The ginger and the uh, cloves are coming together with the apples to give you all the fall flavors. Mm. So now we're going to do our cuts. Okay. I'll do half the cuts and you can do the other half. All right, you I should have... show me because I have no idea what is going on. <laughs> yeah, this is like something that you really try to explain in writing, but seeing it is always so much easier. Oh, so yeah. I'm being gentle with my grandmother's pastry mat, but we're gonna take two notches out of each side. So the corners we're eliminating. Okay. And now we wanna have one inch little fringes on either side. So one, and it could be a little bit thicker or thinner. Just try and get them to be kind of the same size. Okay. And last time I did this, I used a measuring tape and marked it all. But today, I'm feeling adventurous. <laughs> and I'm just eyeballing it. Those are mine. I'm fairly happy. So now you can do the other ones. Okay. Following your, your line, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be like, it could be a little bit off. I can mark it for you if that helps. Yeah. And the last thing we're going to do mm -hmm. is take this notch off like this. So now, okay. this is the fun part. You fold over mm -hmm. to make like a little burrito almost. Like this? Yep. Okay. And now we're going to just start crossing it over. And I'm so bad, I have to like actually concentrate because I would just lose the pattern, even yeah. though it's so simple. <laughs> I think it's cute. And we'll finish off by folding it all under like that. Just like this. Nice. One thing I forgot that's somewhat important. <laughs> This has happened to me so many times, okay. and I'll share because we're being vulnerable. Yes. You have to get this over here, but I have a trick. Okay. I only have a trick because I've been very forgetful many times. <laughs> we can't bake the fabric. But what we can do uh... is roll it out. Oh, yeah! There we go. Confidence. 
Uh -huh. And we're gonna loosely cover this and let it rise for about 15 minutes. It okay. just needs to puff up a bit. And in the meantime, we're gonna have a nice conversation. Yes. Wait, I'm trying the braided thing, but Rie is like much better than I am. I have to like also keep going because if I stop, I lose my pattern and it doesn't turn out. Rie was like, I don't know how to braid. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. It's been about 15 minutes. We had a charming conversation. Yes. Ta-da! Our bread has risen up, and we have our two little braids that we made, too, and they're super puffy now. Yeah. Oh, it's so soft. I shouldn't have lifted it. <laughs> it's like, wait till it bakes. <laughs> so we're going to have an egg wash for this. You can do the honors. All right. One egg. We're just going to mix it up. And then whenever you add an egg wash, it just adds shine and creates a beautiful golden color. So it's always a must for breads that I make. Okay, so let's brush that over gently. Okay. So at home, I actually have like some nice uh, painting brushes mm. that I got at the art store. Oh. And I only use them for pastry stuff because like see that, how it dented it in right now? Oh. All the pastry brushes you get at the store for food are like pretty rough. Yeah. So I like to have a gentle Same. sable brush. What is your husband's favorite food from your book? Oh, from the book, I think he really likes the apple butter cake. Mm. So there's a cake and it has tons of apples in it. Mm -hmm. has a little bit of thyme, just for an herbal note. And it's a two layer cake in between apple butter. So it has a browned butter maple vanilla frosting. Okay. And it's just like all the fall flavors you could want. Uh -huh. I think his actual favorite cake though is the chocolate carrot cake because mm -hmm. he loves the cream cheese frosting on it so much. The one you said it's the most difficult one to develop. Yes, that was the most work uh, for me. It was rewarding. This is ready to go into the oven 350 for about half an hour or until it's golden brown puffed and it smells amazing. Yay. Here you go. Our bread's baking. It smells really good. If I don't say so myself, <laughs> it's going to be finished off with a really easy glaze and you could add any of your favorite flavors to one. Okay. Think of this as a blank canvas. Mm. So half a cup of powdered sugar into a small bowl. Okay, first powdered sugar. Two to three teaspoons of milk. I want this to be nice and just a good drizzling consistency. So yeah. nice. that's perfect. So let's drizzle on over and be a nice sweet start for each bite. What kind of flavoring do you suggest or recommend? Because we're talking about orange, I would love to have like a little bit of orange zest in here. That was the first thing I orange thought. Orange juice, or yeah. you could also have some spices in here too, like a little pinch of. Yeah, why not? Just like a little pinch of my mom's cardamom clove mm -hmm. combination, and then that'll add a nice aroma. After baking, I let the bread cool for about 20 minutes, and now we can top it with our easy breezy glaze. Yeah. You want me to do it? You should do it. Okay. I'm too Just nervous. drizzle it over. It's really just like a carefree little bit of extra sweetness. Nice. There we go. It's a very nice consistency. It's sliced up nice. Yeah, it's just like you could put. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're gonna take a bite. Tell me what you think. Okay. Mm. Oh mm. my god, it's so good! It's nice. Not too sweet. Mm -mm. The best compliment from an Asian person. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, check out Rie's channel, Rie Macalini, and my book playlist.